Hey guys, Tony here, and back to do another recent Vinyl Editions video. So, um, really quick, this is my second attempt at this video. Uh, I tried doing it before, and um, just uh, something went, went wrong and I stopped. And, uh, and in it, I, was, I talked a little bit about how, well first, I've reached 500 subscribers. And I just want to say thank you to everybody that subscribes and watches. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I don't think I would keep doing it if it wasn't for, you know, all you guys and, you know, the community and everything. It's just an awesome thing. But in the, my first attempt at this video, I had said, like, you know, I, I started making videos probably about a year ago, maybe, you know, around there. And um, <clears throat> I wasn't sure. So in between, you know, I stopped and um, I was looking on my computer and just happened to look, uh, just happened to go back and look and see when I actually made my first video, and it was a year ago today, uh, was just a, a coincidence, really, on, yeah, October 23rd, it's Sunday night now, um, 2010, I made my first video, and so it's been a year today that I've been making videos, and uh, I just reached 500 subscribers the other day, and i um, really happy about it. I'm going to uh, have a contest at some point soon. I don't know what I'm going to do with the details of it yet, but when I have all that worked out, I mean... You guys will be the first to know. Um, so yeah, I'm you know just really kind of stoked about that. Um, it's a cool thing, and again, like I've always said, like you know, this isn't something I would normally imagine myself doing, and um, I'm glad I really like just took the risk and started doing it. I think it's paid off quite a bit with the community and everything. I mean, when I started, I mean there was only like a handful of us. It seemed like um, you know, Mr. Hall of Fame, Nathan Spellerine, Dan in Canada, of course. Joseph O'Donnell, um, and probably a few others, um, but yeah, it, it's it's been cool, so it's grown so much, it's been cool to see how much this has grown with everybody joining and everything, so, um, so yeah, I'm just going to get started here, also thank you to everybody who answered my thread, um, I'm going to reply, I know I said I'd reply sooner, but I'm actually waiting for an item or two that just coincidentally would fit, it will fit in perfectly with the, my response. So I'm going to wait for that. It should be here this week. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you thought about doing it, I mean, please feel free. When I said, like, scary record, I mean, it's like, I tried to leave it as open as possible. I mean, there's not a lot of music I have that I personally find scary. But something just in the spirit of it. I mean, whatever probably could be perceived as scary, or even just the record cover. I have some some record covers that it's like, it's just freaky. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I'm, I'm just going to show the, that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, thanks everybody who answered. Um, let me get started here showing you what I got. I know I said I was going to slow down and I really have, but it's just, it's not going to really look like it. Uh, I've chilled out a lot on the online buying, which uh, is where I usually kind of go crazy with because, you know, I don't know about you guys, but with online purchases, like I zero in on something and I usually find it, you know, and I get it and that's, you know. I could usually go to the record store and walk out with, you know, one or two items, uh, and that's usually not a problem, but I also made a trip up to, to uh, Northampton, Mass, and I hung out with Mike, Bostonian Reggie again, uh, another, you know, VC member here, um, and went to uh, Feeding Tube Records, which is a fantastic store, I've talked about it before, awesome stuff, so I'll show you what I picked up there, and some other things that have come in the mail, and Excuse me, and that I've uh, picked up. So, all right. So this is an item that I just was kind of resigned to, to. I'm just not gonna own it. You know, I'm not gonna buy it. Uh, I had the album already. It retails now for about seventy-five to eighty bucks, and I've seen it. I I think I we seen it for ninety dollars the other day, yesterday. Um, yeah. So I was just like, this is no need really. The bonus material that's on this, I already have most of it, I believe, on uh, digitally bootleg quality stuff, but still perfectly fine. I've been listening to it for years. Um, but I decided just to look, and I looked on eBay, and there's, there's a seller selling this for $40. <clears throat> I just could not let it go. It's a it's a very common album, very commercial, mainstream, I guess, and um, but still in a very important album, an important album to me. Um, I'm a... I remain a, f a huge fan of this band. I probably always will be. They're really important to me, um, especially when I was, you know, a teenager. And um, so yeah, Nirvana's Nevermind, 
and this is the 20th anniversary uh, 4LP edition of this. I uh, I have just a regular copy of, of this album on vinyl. Um, so yeah, for 40 bucks, 45 bucks altogether, like with shipping, all in. I couldn't couldn't let it go. Um, but it's it's an awesome set. I mean, four LPs. You have the regular album. You have Smart Session, uh, the Smart Sessions, uh, all the B sides from this period, um, a couple live tracks, I believe, and um, and BBC sessions. So it's a really cool thing. If you don't know the song uh, Carmudgeon by Nirvana, it's one of my favorite by them. Check that tune out, because it is just fantastic. So yeah, Nirvana's Nevermind, the 20th anniversary edition. Really happy to get this, so what a, a fantastic price for it, too. All right, moving on, an album here that I have not listened to yet. From what I understand, though, this is not, um, well, first, it's Exposure by Robert Fripp. Oh, here's the, the actual cover, uh, and it's uh, on EG Records and uh, from 1979. And my understanding is that there's, this isn't like a, a Frippertronics album. It's more of kind of a rock album. But I'm not quite sure. I haven't listened to it yet. But yeah, I picked it up. Seven bucks. So look forward to checking that out. <clears throat> this one is a replacement copy. Um, I had this album forever. Known about it forever. But the, my copy is definitely kind of beat. I think I picked it up like years ago in the dollar bin. Uh, Jethro Tull's Aqualong. Classic, of course, from 1971. This is on Reprise Records. Um, just a classic, awesome, awesome album. Uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with this. And I couldn't pass it, couldn't pass it up for the price and how just beautiful it was. So really glad to have a replacement copy of that. Love Jethro Tull. Uh, another album here. I picked up an album by this guy, and I, I said I'm definitely going to check out more by him because. I just loved what I heard, and I saw this at my local store, and I grabbed it. This is uh, Luden Wainwright III, and this is uh, Attempted Mustache. So it's kind of a funny title and cover here. Um, excellent stuff once again. Really happy with this. I want to get his first couple albums too, but yeah, really cool stuff. Just like folk, folk rock. It's, you know, it's just really cool stuff, and uh, happy to get it. I believe this is from 1973. Yeah, and this is uh, produced by Bob Johnston as well, who was, you know, Bob Dylan's producer for a while, and producer a number of other great artists. Picked up another Donovan record. Oddly enough, I never see this album, I just don't. Uh, and I imagine it was probably, like, a top seller for him. I mean, the, the this title track was a, a big hit. So this is Donovan's Mellow Yellow. It's from 1967, I want to say. Uh, excellent stuff, of course. And another song on here, too, um, that kind of uh, is uh, kind of like a tr dedication to uh, Bert Yanch. It's called um, House of Yanch. And on, uh, I think, Sunshine Superman, there was a song called Bert's Blues. But yeah, awesome stuff. Mellow Yellow, um, Rider in the Sun, Bleak City Woman, Museum, uh, Young Girl Blues. Just a really cool record. I'm happy to get it. Here's one. It's my first exposure to this band. I want to get more of their regular albums because I really like this. Um, the Flame and Groovies, and this is called Grease, and it is there. It's a compilation of singles, uh, the complete Sky Dog singles collection, and uh, really cool. They're from San Francisco. They weren't really a psych band though, more like a garage rock band. And a lot of covers on here. River Deep, Mountain High. Um, and Your Bird Can Sing, uh, Jumpin' Jack Flash, Can't Explain, Little Queen, Painted Black, just a lot of covers, but still excellent stuff, and a uh, really cool band, so happy to get that. Here's another reissue by Dinosaur Jr., again, a $13 or so no frills reissue of Bug, and uh, check out the, their, these reissues. This is an album I was not familiar with by them, uh, and... I really should have been. It's a, it's an excellent classic album, so happy to get it. Another one. This artist I picked I picked this up the other day. I'm not familiar with this artist until this. Um, I know um, Cool Ranch Dressing. They showed this album, 
and uh, it's a really beautiful record. So I'm probably going to slaughter his name, but I think it's Sufjan Stevens, and this is Seven Swans. Really kind of beautiful folk record, really, and uh, just really nice stuff. This is a reissue on audio grade, uh, audio file grade vinyl, plus a, a free 7 inch with two unreleased tracks. I didn't listen to the 7 inch yet, but cool stuff. I'm going to check out more by him. So I, I picked up those Brian Eno, uh, the Ambient series, and like I never see those. You know, I never see anything like that too much. And um, not long after buying those, I came across this. Brian Eno's Music for Films. Again, another ambient record. I think this predates his ambient series, though. It's all stuff that he recorded for imaginary films, like his music for imaginary films. And it is uh, an original on the Antilles label. And uh, not bad. For, I paid about 10 bucks for this. Uh, and cool stuff. Happy to get it, of course. Brian Eno's Music for Films. Here is another absolute masterpiece. It's one that I've been listening to for quite a while now on my iPod. I have it on just digitally. And uh, so happy to finally get it on vinyl. Robert Wyatt's Rock Bottom. And this is a reissue. This is an absolute, like, just a moody, kind of atmospheric uh, just masterpiece. It's so good. Um, I believe it's his first album after his accident that left him... Uh, from his fall, really, that left him paralyzed. And uh, really excellent stuff. And if, if you're not familiar with this record, check it out. It's, it's really something else. Rock Bottom. And this is a very limited edition reissue. Deluxe LP and CD reissues of Robert Wyatt's Rock Bottom. So very happy to get that. Now, the, a couple here, I'll show you what I picked up at Feeding Tube Records. Uh, I picked this up. This is a, a brand new reissue of uh, Sonic Youth's first album, Confusion of Sex. An album I'm not familiar with, and I still have not listened to it. I picked it up yesterday. Um, it's still sealed. But I got it for 10 bucks. This usually goes for about 20 I would say. Um, because it has like a ding corner here. But for 10 bucks, I mean, I couldn't pass it by. I mean, uh, for, yeah, 2010 reissue, 1983 album. Yeah. So, looking forward to that. Alright, a few Krat Rock albums here. Um, this one I've been waiting for for a while. Uh, I ordered it and it just took forever to get in. Uh, this is Embryos, Rach. Rach, is that, if that's how you say it, Rach. Um, excellent stuff. Um, Embryo, of course, are a German Krat Rock band. I believe they were based out of Munich. And uh, my understanding, like what I read, was that the band's based out of Germany, like of, of the Krat Rock scene. Um, the German bands seem to be more kind of, you know, spacey, reaching for, for outer space, while, the, while the, the bands based out of Munich were more Eastern influenced and jazz influenced, and of course still very psychedelic as well. Uh, and Embryos like that, very jazz influenced. Um, and what's interesting about this too is that there, I, I believe there's no guitar on this album at all. Uh, it is their second LP after Opal, and it's, it's a fantastic record. So, while at uh, Feeding Tube Records, I saw this, and uh, this wasn't even on my radar at all, and I saw the, uh, I read the promo sticker, and I'll read this to you, well, first of all, it's Embryos, their third album after Rage, um, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, and this is fantastic, this is even better than Rage, I think, um, just really, again, I mean, a lot of jazz influence, progressive rock, crowd rock, just awesome stuff so the promo sticker said this and I just after reading it I'm like I gotta buy this album promo stickers just have that effect on me sometimes so it says this is uh oh is this the best best kraut rock LP of all time well if can get disqualified for having members from Japan and America and brain ticket get get busted for their Italian connection then the gold medal goes straight to uh, father son holy ghost by embryo squash together the best bits of delay 1968 uh, Gold Ball and Vampiros Lesbos, and you might have something close to this essential LP. And I gotta say, it's it's fantastic. <clears throat> this is a uh, again another Wawa -Wa reissue, and uh, so so happy to get it. It's really cool. It's Gayfold. And uh, speaking of that uh, 
Vampiros Lesbos. I picked this up, and I have to say, it is fantastic. Vampiros Lesbos. So this is a soundtrack to a film. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, of the same name, and it's a German film, I believe from 1969 or 70. Around that period, of course. Um, and the music, I guess the film, they say, is just kind of crap. It's kind of a, a German take on, I guess, kind of like Dracula. Um, but it's a, a female vampire that likes uh, female blood. And uh, this would go good with the Halloween uh, thread. But anyway, this is like funky, atmospheric, acid jazz. Um, just really cool. I mean, there's a lot of this brass, there's a lot of uh, keyboards, um, sitars, it's just a really cool record, and so happy to get it. Um, if you're not familiar with this, I recommend checking it out. Um, very, very cool. If the film looks like it'd be pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, so happy to get this. I've saw it in the store forever, and I believe Anthony the Infinite Groove, I think it was him, he sent me a, a video of this. And I'd seen the record at the store, like, before he sent that. I just didn't know what it was. And, uh, yeah, so I went back and I, I got it. And, uh, check it out. It's really, really good. <clears throat> Another Kraut Rock. This was from, uh, again, from Feeding Tube Records. And Mike Bostoni and Reggie showed this. And there is a tune on this that I was familiar with. It was on that Soul Jazz compilation. Uh, but this is Between and the Waters Open. Uh, I believe these guys were another Munich-based band, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, again, a lot of Eastern influence going on here. Um, but yeah, jazz kind of influence as well. A lot of flute. Um, a lot of cool stuff here. But the song uh, Devotion is on that soul jazz compilation. And it's excellent. So I wanted to check this out. It's from 1973. Again, a Wawa reissue, and this is limited to 500 copies only. Again, first released on Vertigo in 1972, this is often regarded as Between's most exotic and beautiful opus, a huge droning masterpiece with oriental nuances that might recall Popovul, uh, Fripp and Eno, and the Taj Mahal Travelers, a classic album from early German 70s scene that deserves to be rediscovered. So, very cool. Happy to get that. Finally, well not finally, another Kraut Rock album that has been at my local store for a while. And I've been eyeballing it for a while, but just didn't know really what to make of it. So I finally bit the bullet and got it. And I have to say, I am so happy I did. Because this is absolutely, in my opinion, essential. Um, especially for fans of Kraut Rock. This is fantastic. So this is a soundtrack. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name of the film. Um, uh, uh, Jesus, I'm terrible at names if you haven't noticed already, but it's a soundtrack to a film by a collective called Inner The Inner Space, and basically it's Can before they became Can. so this is absolutely fantastic. This is the name of the film, I'm not going to try and pronounce it, two names, and I guess it's like a political satire kind of film, uh, German of course, and um, the album also features Rosie Rosie, I believe her name. And uh, she, she's like a, an actress and a political, um, I guess she was a kind of a big figure in the German underground scene. That's her pictured on the cover. Um, she appears on other albums as well. But uh, yeah, this is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's yeah, it's can, um, but with a few other people, I, I think. Awesome, awesome, awesome stuff. Check this out. Really, it's a great LP. So happy to get that. And finally, uh, well not finally, I keep saying finally, Pearls Before Swine. I have not listened to this yet, but I've heard so many good things about it. And this is a, a limited edition of a thousand copy reissue. Uh, this is number 352, if you can see that. And uh, again, like they're a folk band, and looking forward to checking it out. Um, very cool. And finally, finally, I mean it this time. Um, an album I've been after for quite a while, but I just could not find it for a reasonable price. Um, I specifically wanted this reissue. It's a 3LP reissue, and this album is fantastic. I've listened, I picked it up yesterday. I've already listened to almost, I listened to two discs of it, and uh, I liked it like right away. 
Dennis Wilson's, and this is Pacific Ocean Blue. And this is the 3LP Blue Clear Blue Vinyl Sunday 3 issue. And you can find in this, usually Sunday stuff is pretty easy to come by. But I, this is going for like $40, it seems like, or more. And uh, it's from 2008, that reissue. Originally released, I want to say, in like 75, if I'm not mistaken. Awesome, awesome LP. And they really did a nice job on the packaging. Um, so yeah, Brian Wilson, of the, Dennis Wilson, excuse me, Brian Wilson's brother, who tragically died, I want to say in like 82 or 83. Um, really talented guy, of course, and he was the drummer for the Beach Boys. And this is, I believe, his only solo album. Uh, I know a lot of you guys have this and have showed it, but I'm just really happy to get it. So, there you go, guys. Those are my finds. Um, I'll be back later this week with a, uh, with a response to my thread. So, yeah, as always, leave me some comments, guys. And, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Take care.